Hey guys, Brian here. Thanks for joining me in the lab today. And I want to make a video real quick about discussing why I stopped selling geckos to PetSmart and Petco. Now real quick, for those of you that maybe don't live in America and aren't familiar with those companies, PetSmart and Petco are the two big chain pet stores we have here in the United States. They're both real big standalone stores. They have stores in every state in the U.S. And they sell some live animals, not cats or dogs or bigger pets, but they do sell fish, small animals like hamsters, gerbils, mice, and reptiles. And it's a real controversial subject, the live animals that they sell. So I just wanted to make a quick video discussing why I chose to stop selling to them and what I've chosen to move my focus towards in the last couple years. So real quickly, before I discuss why I chose to stop selling to these stores, I'd like to take a minute to discuss the world of mass-produced, wholesale reptile breeding in general. Now, this is a, to a controversial topic that a lot of people have strong feelings about one way or the other. So basically, there's a lot of companies that don't sell their geckos to individual people. They don't do, you want to buy a gecko from me, so I just sell you a gecko. That's not the way it works. There's companies that their entire business platform is to mass produce as many animals as they can and then sell those wholesale to other stores, mainly big pet stores. Now the number of animals that some of these places can produce is astonishing. There's a breeder, one single breeder here in the US that hatches more than 300 leopard geckos per day, 365 days a year. It's insane how many animals they produce. But that's indicative of the market for reptiles. The pet market for reptiles in this country is so big that they're one of several, several breeders who produce massive numbers of animals for these stores. And that's where the controversial part of this comes in. A lot of people believe that mass producing these animals is fueling this idea that reptiles are disposable pets, that they're something you can buy for your kids on a whim or as an impulse purchase. And it's not like buying a cat or a dog where you're making a lifetime commitment to this animal. It's something that a lot of people do treat as, oh, I can buy it to my kid to placate them, make them happy, and when they get bored of it, we just get rid of it or throw it away because it's just a lizard, it doesn't matter. And that's that's the unfortunate part of that that section of the reptile business. It is really unfortunate that that exists and some people do see it that way and some people only see it that way and I don't think that's quite accurate but that is an unfortunate part of the reptile world. Another big topic of controversy is the idea that PetSmart and Petco mistreat their animals and this is something that we see all the time. Constantly on social media and in forums you'll see posts about somebody taking a picture of a gecko or a turtle or some other animal in a cage at a PetSmart, Petco, or other big chain store, and clearly it's not being held in the right kind of habitat, the caging requirements are all off, the temperatures are way too high or way too low for that particular animal, and there's a lot of cases where they just don't do a very good job giving those animals the care that they require. Also, Another issue is the care that they tell you to give it at home. A lot of the people running the reptile departments in these stores don't have much experience with reptiles. And they're simply giving you the knowledge that they've read off their corporate care sheet for that particular animal. And a lot of those times those care sheets are wrong. So for example, you could go to one of these stores, buy a crested gecko, and the person selling it to you has no experience with crested geckos and they're just giving you the facts that they've been taught to recite and those facts can be wrong. The temperature they tell you to keep the geckos at, the kind of food they tell you to keep those, to feed those geckos. All these facts can be wrong and it can vary from store to store and sometimes the employees just make things up on what they think is right or wrong and it really can get confusing and that's where the real issue with these stores comes in is there's no expertise, there's no real education before you buy these animals. And that's where I think the big problem comes in. And that's where the question comes in, should these stores be allowed to sell live animals to begin with? There's lots of petitions and lots of people that lobby to make laws that these stores should not be allowed to stock and sell live animals. And I do think there is some merit to that, although I don't completely agree with it. 
Now to me, the argument on the other side of the coin about whether or not we should support large chain stores selling live animals is, there is a lot of good to it, I believe. The main thing for me is, I am a reptile enthusiast, I breed and sell reptiles, and I love to educate other people about reptiles, and I love to see other people get excited and engaged with reptiles. And the biggest thing these chain stores provide is the just huge opportunity for outreach to bring new people into the reptile world. I'm a perfect example of this. The first crested gecko I ever saw was at a PetSmart. I was out with my girlfriend at the time. This was 15 years ago, almost. I was out with my girlfriend. She wanted to, we had to go into the pet store for something and she wanted to go look at the reptiles. Honestly, I was tired. I was kind of grumpy. I wanted to go home. I didn't want anything to do with this. And she talked me into going over there and there was this little gecko in a cage and she just had to hold it. So she brought the guy over and he opened the cage and we got to hold it. And even though I was not in the mood to even spend my time doing this, as soon as I got to hold this little gecko, I was hooked. I was absolutely hooked. I thought it was the coolest animal I'd ever seen and I couldn't believe I could actually own something like this. About a year later, I ended up buying my first couple geckos and it snowballed from there and now here I am making YouTube videos for you about geckos. So the point of that is, the amount of people that these stores can reach and engage with these animals is unmatched by anything else. There's nothing else, no other store, no other venue, no other person that can bring this many people into the reptile world and get this many people excited about reptiles. And I think there's a lot, a lot of good in that. I know a lot of people right now sitting at home, a lot of you are even saying, yeah, that was my first snake, my first turtle, my first interaction with a reptile was at one of these stores. And I really think there's a lot of merit to that. And I, I'm, I'm not sold that we should ban these stores from keeping these animals or selling these animals. I don't think that's the way to go. Although I do see all of the issues that come with these stores and especially the care issues and the way they treat and sell these animals as disposable pets. I see those issues and I do think that's something to address, but I do not think these stores should be banned from keeping and selling these animals to the public. So having said that, you might now be asking if that's how I feel that I do think there's a lot of good in these shorts, these stores should be selling these animals. Why did I quit supplying these stores with geckos? So to give you a brief history, um, there was a point about four or five years ago that I was producing a lot more geckos than I do now. And I had a whole half of my company, I kind of had two divisions. I had the high-end division that was all specific morphs and patterns, and that's where we were breeding to create new things. And those sales were all to private customers, other collectors, other breeders. And then the other half of the company was all wholesale. And that was a lot of groups that were maybe experimental groups that I just, you know, put some different geckos together just to see what would come out. We had a lot of groups that were solely together just to produce pet quality geckos for these stores. And at that point, we were hatching about 5,000 geckos a year. And a little over half of those were going to, mostly to Petco. So the, the way it works, just to let you guys know, it's uh, that the store, the individual stores, don't buy them from me. They wouldn't buy them from me. The, to be able to sell them in the retail stores, they would all get vet checked first. And so I would sell them to a distributor. So I would sell them to one of Petco's licensed distributors. That guy would have all the inspections done and then the stores, the corporate office, would place orders with him and then tell him which individual stores to ship geckos to. So that's kind of how it works. And there was two main reasons that I quit doing this. The first reason, which is the more honorable sounding one, is that I just lacked a passion for it. When I got into this, my entire point of wanting to breed geckos, what really drove me into this, was the idea, I was fascinated by the idea that I could take two geckos, breed them, and make something brand new, something that had never existed before. A gecko that looked a certain way, was a certain color, had a certain pattern that didn't exist. And you could improve on patterns and improve on colors and make new combinations out of all these mutations. And I was just fascinated by that. And that's what drove me into breeding. Well, wholesale breeding, obviously, you don't do that. It's not about patterns and colors, it's about 
it's about producing a large number of healthy geckos to sell to people as pets. And while there's nothing inherently wrong with that, that's just not what I was interested in. So the first most noble reason, I suppose, that I got out of the wholesale industry is I just wasn't very interested in it, and it's, it wasn't a passion for me. And that's where it kind of ties into the second reason that I quit doing it, is also the reason I got into it, is because I do run a business, that I do make a living breeding these animals, and I made part of that living selling wholesale animals. And I don't think there's anything wrong with that. I don't think there's anything inherently wrong with mass producing, responsibly mass producing large numbers of geckos to sell them to make a living. That's, I mean, that's what the reptile industry is. That's the main bulk of the reptile industry. And if it weren't for people doing that, stocking those pet stores with geckos, I never would have found these geckos. I wouldn't be sitting here right now today. So I don't think that's wrong. And I did it to make a living. And that's also the other reason I quit is the wholesale market got way more competitive and the prices went way down from where it was when I started doing the wholesale game and it got to the point that it just wasn't feasible for me to continue that. So what happened is it got to a point that in the space I am now where I keep my geckos I was basically full. I couldn't fit more geckos into this space and I was producing about 5,000 a year. 2,500 to 3,000 of those were wholesale animals. Well, when I first started selling wholesale animals, they were selling for $24 to $25 per gecko. And that was a really good price. It was well worth my time to put the time and energy and effort and resources into producing these animals. When I quit doing wholesale, they were selling for $11 a gecko, l less than half. And at that point, the profit margins had gotten so thin that I wasn't producing enough animals to make it economically viable. So I had to make a choice. I either move to a new location, expand, get a much bigger facility and produce more geckos and shoot to produce 15 to 20,000 geckos a year and wholesale them at 11 to $12 a piece. And at that point, I would be able to turn enough profit that it would be worth it. And I just decided that that's not what I want to do. That's not where my passion is. That's not what I enjoy. And I just, I didn't get into this to be hatching 20,000 geckos a year to sell for a couple dollars profit each. It's just, that's not worth it. It's not fun. It's not what I like. I'm not morally opposed to the people that do that. It just wasn't for me. So I had to make the choice because of those two reasons that kind of came together and it was a perfect storm that I just made the choice that, you know what, I'm, I'm going to lose some business and I'm going to lose a little bit of money and my income's going to go down, but I'm going to enjoy what I do more. So I got rid of most of the wholesale stuff. I sold off a lot of those animals. I quit breeding for wholesale and I do. I, the profit that I used to make off wholesale no longer exists and that's fine. I, I don't make quite as much money as I did when I did that, but I'm happier having a lot more time to focus on the projects that I do like and focusing all of my energy and all of my time back on different morphs and mutations and what combinations can we come up with and what different things can we make and create because that's really what drove me into this business to begin with. Um, I had a running joke with a friend, a gecko friend, another breeder, years ago. Me and him used to talk all the time and we had this running joke that when we were kids, we were both huge Pokemon fans. We loved Pokemon, we played the video games, we collected all the cards, and I was super into the trading cards. I had like 5,000 Pokemon cards at one point when I was a kid. It was wild. But I was obsessed with it. I had to have one card for everything. I had, every, I had to have every different card, every different Pokemon, all the different versions. I had the Japanese cards that you, I couldn't even read because they're all in Japanese. I just thought it was so cool. And we had this running joke that Pokemon breeding reptiles is just playing Pokemon for adults. You're collecting every different morph and color and pattern and I want to make new ones and that's I kind of have that same mentality and I'm still super interested in it. So that's the real reason I quit supplying these big pet stores is I just didn't have a passion for it and, and it got to the point that I wanted to focus on what I was passionate about and what made me happy and what I enjoyed. And I have to say over the last two years 
I've really gotten my numbers of geckos back down to where I want them to be, and I've been able to expand some of my other higher-end, more interesting projects more, and I really am all the happier for it. I really have rediscovered a lot of my love for these animals and love for the breeding process, and I've enjoyed it so much. Well, there you go, guys. That's my story. I get questioned all the time about if I supply wholesalers with geckos, and that's the reason that I don't anymore. For those that have uh, always been asking, why did I make that change? I do encourage you, if you're at one of these stores and you see a crested gecko or any other animal being held in a tank that is not suitable for that species, to reach out to that store's reptile department and just offer them help. A lot of times these people are young kids that they put in, in charge of these departments. By kids I mean, you know, 17, 18, 19 year old people and they just don't know any better and a lot of times they're very willing to accept advice and help because they don't realize that they're doing anything wrong. So don't be afraid to reach out to these stores if you're in a place that looks like it could use some improvement. Don't be afraid to reach out and ask to talk to the head of the reptile department and just very politely tell them, hey, I thought you should know such and such about this snake needs to be kept at this temperature. I would like to see them happy and healthy. I'm sure you would too. And a lot of the times they're very eager and willing to listen to that. So I think if we all work together, this entire situation can definitely be made better and these animals can be treated better and we cannot lose what I think is a valuable resource to help engage a lot of people into enjoying reptile keeping as a hobby. So that's my little spiel. That's my story. Thank you so much for joining me today, guys. Um, I'm going to get out of here. i got to go feed some geckos. So have a wonderful day. I really appreciate it, and I will see you guys soon.